Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up at the Studio 34 Fantasy Sports Network here at Rockin' Riley's. Today, we have guests from across the globe. First up, though, we have USA Rugby Congress member Steve Lewis and Congress alternate Mr. Mike Crafton. Mike is also with the Empire GU. He is the designated survivor, the Kiefer Sutherland of uh the Empire GU in case anything happens to Kent Pape. Steve, you're now the Collegiate All-Americans Sevens coach for the men? Yeah, that's right. Just a tournament coming up in Glendale in August. And August. you got the Bulldogs to the Nationals. Yeah, we did. So great achievement. First time ever for the Bulldogs making Nationals. So proud of those guys. They put a good effort in the summer. Kudos to you, uh, but you're not here for that reason. You're here because we have that big Congress assembly uh, this coming weekend uh, or meeting, Congress getting together because they have board members to vote for and a bunch of other stuff. And on, on my left here is Mr. James Walker, not to be confused with Paul Holmes of Tiger Rugby. Uh, James is a South African. He doesn't speak any English. I will be interpreting. James, welcome. Bye, donkey. Buy a donkey, because uh, they're cheap right now. Uh, all right, but let's get right to it. Uh, Mr. Michael Crafton, you are of the Bayonne Bombers. That's right. In New Jersey. Uh, for the folks at home that don't know where Bayonne is, you remember Tom Cruise in the War of the Worlds, right? Yep. When those machines came to, to life, that's basically where they play. That's right. You were the former president of the Empire GU. You're a newly elected member of the Empire GU board. That's right. That's right. And you are Ken Pape, the current president's alternate, should Ken fall ill or not be able to make the meeting. That's right. Right. So, And you actually go to these meetings. Yes. You I, s- that's right. I've, I've been to every meeting maybe for the past five years. Okay. So you know your stuff. Yeah. And according to Ken Pape and everybody else that I've talked to about you, uh, you are a reasonable man, not like, I'm not going to say Ken's not a reasonable man, but he's a little bit high strung. He's a military guy. And Steve's the, the champagne socialist. He is the emotional, uh, artsy kind of guy. Right? I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah. We complement each other well. You have, what's the word for artsy kind of guy in Afrikaans? We'll leave that for the next segment for Frankie, yeah, I think. Oh, he speaks English. Hmm. All right. It's a miracle. We, all right. We'll have to get rid of the teleprompter then. And, and, all right. So, guys, briefly, uh, Congress meeting coming up. We've got um, a lot of stuff going on with Tony Ridnell declaring that he'd like to be the chairman of the board of directors of USA Rugby, but short of a congressional coup and uh, some rifles. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. Is there a possibility of that happening? No, there's absolutely no possibility. Um, the only two people that could possibly become directors is Chad Keck could get reelected and Ms. O'Brien could become a director. If for whatever reason Congress decided they didn't want either of them to be uh, directors, they could vote them down. As nominees. As nominees. And then we start from square one, go back to the n- nominating committee. They vet uh, candidates again. It could be the same folks uh, that went through the process before. And then we go back through the whole process. So we, there's there's no way that Tony Ridnell or anyone else could become a member of the board this weekend. So really the only thing that could potentially happen in terms of the board shakeup is really nothing other than we're going to have to come back and get, get two, new, two new nominees. That's right. Could those two be nominated again by the board? I suppose so, but... Probably not practical if no. they were to be voted down. I okay. wouldn't think they'd make it through again. All right. Stephen, the board itself really chooses the nominees. It's not Congress that chooses the nominees. For all intents and purposes, yeah. So you have a board um, nominating committee. The chair of that is a Congress member, but the other four members of that committee are appointed by the board. Um, so that there's many of us who consider that something of a flawed process, but that is the process for this particular meeting. And so Mike is actually quite correct that we are essentially voting, there's two issues, we're voting to ratify a board nomination, and we are voting potentially on a dues increase. That's all we're voting on. That's all that Dues happen. increase. Membership dues increase. When was yeah. the last time the dues was increased? Not sure. I think it's certainly about three, four years. So it's been a while. Yeah. yeah more than that. Maybe, is it? maybe closer to a decade, I think. So is there any 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 anything being thrown around out there that if the dues is increased, maybe it also includes a subscription to the Rugby Channel? 
Yeah, I think I think there's a belief that um, a Jews increase there should be some commensurate um, uh, quality with that, like member benefits. So, like so a the, rugby wrap up koozie, right? So there's a lot of talk as what do we get for our money? It's a standard thing. Um, mm. I, I don't personally think there's a problem with the sort of cost of living increase or a small increase. I mean, we're we're in a bad financial situation. And, unfor and unfortunately, ta taxing the members is, is a part of it in one way out, and I think we may all have to take it on the chin. So we haven't seen that proposal yet, though, so I That's certainly right. haven't. So I'm not sure what we're voting on with regard to Jews' increases. We're all right, so no, none of these proposals come out ahead of time. You'll find out when you get there? What, what, what's that? M more or less. Maybe, maybe we'll find out today or tomorrow, um, but otherwise, basically, when we show up. I think this is a frustration of Congress. I think I can speak for a lot of people on Congress that when we request things from the board, which we did at the last meeting in Austin, um, the, the disdain with which the board has treated Congress in terms of providing documentation, financials, is really something that sticks in a lot of people's throats and actually um, drives a great deal of the frustration with the board. So I, I just want to quickly, quickly point out, too, because you said uh, you go to all the meetings, and you go. To, you're now a new, relatively new Congress member. Um, the difference is the Empire GU, if I'm not mistaken, at least picks up the tab for you to go there, whereas he's paying out of his own pocket each time. Correct. How's that work? Well, I, I suppose that's a difference between the clubs and and colleges. Um, but shouldn't there be a common fund or something that? allows the Congress members to go there? I'm, not, I'm not, not sure the National Union is in a position to help me financially at this stage. All right. Well, we've got a minute, and we've got a minute left. And, uh, James, you're sitting here only because I wanted you guys and, and Frankie Horn and also Paul Holmes are here off camera. Uh, but I wanted you guys to just listen in on this stuff because you guys are doing business in rugby in the United States. You're doing global business in rugby. But this stuff all kind of impacts you guys, the board of directors, the CEO, the makeup of of um, USA Rugby's governing body, right? So um, we'll be right back after this message, but we'll get back to that in, when we do come back. If you're just joining us, this is a big match and a big moment as Kleister's toes the line. You know, John, Anderson has really been struggling out there today. mistake as Kleister's clinches another title. Don't let your nutrition get in the way. USANA, the official multivitamin of the WTA. We're back with Mr. Michael Crafton, Mr. Stephen Lewis, and Mr. James Walker. Uh, James, we just left on the last break just touching upon how you are doing business here in the United States and across the globe, but how this Rugby Congress, Board of Directors, USA Rugby thing impacts the way you do business. And we'll, we'll talk about it more in depth when your compadres come on with us in the next segment. No problem. All right. You know, the, all the stuff talking about the big changes, the big changes, the big changes, and how Congress can act and how Congress can do this and that. The last time you guys got together and you were going to maybe make some changes on the board or at least request the review of a board member, it was a 38 to 1 vote in in favor of giving the board um, well, a backing or whatever the official. It's a vote of confidence in the board, yeah. A vote of confidence. And that one, lone wolf, I think, was you. I mean, there were a couple of absta uh, abstentions. Abstentions. Right? <laughs> abstentions or abstentions. Those are nations that abstain. Um, but, yeah, so talk to that. Yeah, at last time, um, there was a vote of confidence in the board requested by Will Chang, the chairman. And uh, you're, you're correct, two abstentions, and I was alone, no vote um, confidence. My views haven't changed. I still believe the, um, the at-large board directors have done a poor job managing our union. Um, I exempt from that the international athletes and the CEO. Why? And because I don't think that the two international athletes are just recently there, uh, Phaedra and Todd, so not really anything to do with it. Um, and the CEO, Dan, obviously has walked into a situation where a great, de dealing with a great many problems not of his making. So I would exempt them. Now, I'm a coach. If the team doesn't perform, you have to make a change, either positionally or tactically or something. This board has not performed. We need to make a change. So for me, this weekend's vote on the two board nominations is essentially a referendum on the performance of the board. So I believe the performance is poor. I will be voting no on both nominations. Chad Keck, who's up for renomination, um, I think is 
is obviously personally responsible for some of the um, um, actions of the board and involved in implicating decisions. The second nomination is uh, Barbara O'Brien, who is, um, I actually vote, she was a former Lieutenant Governor of Colorado. I voted for her, I coached her son, I think she's a fine woman. What has she done in rugby? I'm just asking. I'm not sure that will be explained presumably at the Congress meeting, but um, uh, there's nothing personal, but I will be voting no on that as well. Purely because I see the only way Congress members can express any displeasure with the status quo is to vote no in these nominations. I don't think you guys had too many options. I was, I, I've been told that Will Chang asked for a vote of confidence and that was it. It was just that. So it was kind of an awkward kind of request, which worked. I don't know if it was awkward. I would say it worked. Um, maybe dovetailing off what Steve said, I think a lot of Congress members are going to look at how the board and national office responds to our request from the last Congress meeting and whether certain uh, very important items uh, are substantively addressed. And I think for many members, if they are addressed, um, I don't see a lot of people voting the way Steve is intending to vote. Um, that's still a little bit up in the air, though, quite frankly. Like, what are these items to be addressed? Um, that could re respo responses to financial transparency, um, uh, board accountability, uh, board accountability of the CEO position. So not necessarily of Dan Payne, but of the position. Um, I, I think when Steve talks about the board has has failed um, in his well, opinion up to this well, point. Let me ask you this: There are a ton of people out there that are members are members that see X dollars of loss every year running for the last ten years, and they see common denominators as members of the board of directors and members of Congress. And why is it okay now to accept a promise of transparency? and not hold people accountable for, for the disasters that have happened. Sure, and, and, and that's a fair question. Um, my response would be, you know, when, we're, when we as a Congress are looking or, or to be tasked with saying the board has not lived up to our expectations, the fact is we as Congress did not give them expectations uh, as to what they should be doing. And that's, and that's a fault of Congress as a body. So. I would say, how do you come in and say you as a board have not performed up to snuff based on based on what? That's that's my question. And I think the answer is based on nothing, based on something we're making up now. Um, so it, it's really a gut check time to say we as Congress expect this of the board. And part of what we're expecting is for the board to be very clear about what they're expecting from the CEO, which I don't think was ever done when Nigel was around. Um, they ostensibly uh, seem like they're going to be doing it now for Dan Payne, which is a good start. Uh, but that's a that's a minimum. All right. So, Steve, you look like your head's going to explode. Yeah, it's so. going to explode. I mean, it, that time has come and gone. I mean, we have this recurring conversation every six months. And to say, oh, we'll give them another six months. Um, you have the disaster of pro rugby, okay, the poor vetting of Schoeninger. That is gonna which, for the folks at home that don't know this, might not know this, Steve was the director or the COO of the pro rugby setup. Uh, the first ever professional setup for 15s in the United States. Right, so basically the union has failed to protect its players, coaches, referees, broadcasters, and other employees, left them hung out to dry on this pro rugby thing. It has opened up our union to a crippling, potentially a crippling uh, lawsuit. Th th this has to be faced. You, you can't just give them another six months. $800,000 overspend in high performance. Are we gonna let that go again? Um, RIM, the rugby channel. I mean, w w where do you stop? I mean, w at what point does this board accept responsibility for its actions? All right, well, you know what? I'd pay good money to be a fly on the wall at this meeting coming up because it sounds like it's gonna be a dandy. Um, and we just saw the, the relatively calm, measured demeanor of Mr. Uh, Crafton and the impassioned artistic no, I, Scotsman. But I'd like to add something. Yes. I'd like to add something here. This isn't, um, it's not all negative. You know, it's not burn the house down. Okay, there's some really, really good things happening all across the country, grassroots rugby everywhere, but Tiger rugby guys, Northeast guys, um, the national team qualifying for the World Cup as early as they did, the first yeah. time ever. Yeah. The women going to the World Cup in Ireland, World Cup in San Francisco, lots of positive stuff, but that doesn't allow us to gloss over what has been poor management at the top. We're gonna come back 
after the meeting and talk about what happened at the meeting. Is there going to be a change? Are the board members going to be ratified? I would expect so. Stephen? I think it'll be closer than people think. What's the, what, how many votes to not ratify? It was 46 members of Congress, so it's 23. Um, the problem is the international athletes who are 10 uh, typically aren't present um, and contributing to that, so I'm not sure how that'll work out. And they, and they carry proxies. So but, but only to other international athletes. Oh, you're right. So one person could show up with 10 votes. And that's where it gets um, problematic. Any bylaw changes in this coming meeting? There's one regarding uh, safe sport, which is more a sort of a U.S. Olympic Committee driven one. And the second one, which is important, is the, um, the new U.S. Uh, Rugby Players Association, Blaine Scully, Phaedra Knight. And it's to try and actually address this issue of international athlete apathy in, in, in participation. So to make it more active, younger guys and girls who are involved. So that's a good thing. It's a good bylaw change. Okay, uh, we are getting the producer signal. We are out of time on this segment, unfortunately, but we will be back with Mr. Frankie Horn, the Blitzbach legend, Mr. Paul Holmes of Tiger Rugby, his partner, James Walker. But thank you to Michael Crafton for being here. Thank you, Stephen. Thank, thank you, James. Matt McCarthy at the Fantasy Sports Network, Studio 34 in the Rockin' Riley's Bar for Rugby Wrap-Up.